taking another island, a sunny dot in the far Pacific, half round the world from home. We shoot them down. We burn them out. We blast them. When they're smashed, we take over. Some acres of sand and flies, a few dead Japs spoiling in the sun, very few live ones to bury them. It cost us dear to win this island. Generations of Japanese slaved to load these islands with metal and concrete. These are no gym cracks from the five and dime. They are solid. Here is the no man's land of the Pacific. Here is where Detroit crosses Yokohama. Japs die behind their guns to hold these keys to the Pacific, to preserve their dream of empire. We win these islands, turn them into bases by plans worked out back home. The advanced base proving grounds are the Navy's laboratories of war in the Pacific. Here our industrial strength is converted into effective fighting power. The mechanical wonders of American production are adapted for war, made waterproof to fight from the sea. Where ships have never gone, we build harbors out of nothing on a shallow shore. Where we cannot dock, we drop our cargo in the surf and haul supplies across the beach of an American town in rehearsal for the distant beaches of the Pacific. The simple pontoon takes many shapes, a metal box of great buoyancy combined into rhino barges powered by huge outboard motors to rush critical loads to the combat beach. The same magical boxes lashed together in strings, towed by landing ships, a portable pier, like a highway between ship and shore. pontoon boxes again, assembled as seagoing dry docks, carry repair services along with the fleet, right into the battle zone. We increase the range of the fleet when we send to sea services that used to need a shipyard. Ships row further into the Pacific when they refuel at sea, running side by side at convoy speed. After the challenge of the sea, we defy the jungle, devour the undergrowth with revolving saws. We are a people of machines. For this war of machines, muscle and skill are vital. Like the pioneers of old who won a continent, it is the construction battalions, the CBs, who today build our new frontier outposts in the Pacific wilderness, our advance bases. As fast as war plants turn them out by mass production, the ingenious things devised at the proving grounds pivot toward action overseas the fleet gathers to foray into the Pacific. The Japs felt snug behind their 8,000 mile cushion of Pacific water. We have loaded the fighting ships with power and teamed them with long range assault vessels and service ships in a way new to naval warfare. The task force, distance was our foe. But today, there is no limit to the striking range of an American task force. Day after day, we heave the oceans behind us and thrust against the enemy shore. Navy, 
Army and Marine Corps drive a single solid fist. Now what we set ashore in seconds and minutes is weighed against whatever the enemy has gathered in years of preparation. the clank of armor steal the show. Yet, even while the beach is hot with death, everything on it is a beginning, a seed that will enlarge later. For behind the fire, a far-reaching purpose rules here. In the pain of foxhole surgery, the base hospital is born. of the enemy is merely the first step on the schedule, for the business of the day goes further. At all costs, with metal and machines and blood, Marine and CB are dedicated to establish here a new advanced base. The momentum of the assault secures a beachhead and carries inland. But as the enemy counterattacks, more men and guns are needed. We defend our beachhead while it develops strength to resume the overland advance. The base is born right behind the battle line. The stocky bulldozers set to work bravely, as if they were really tanks. Lines are laid that become the nerves and brain of the base. But the central problem is supply. Against our supply, the enemy strikes. When a loaded LST is hit and lays its bleeding bones on the beach, an awful lot of overtime goes up in smoke at Pittsburgh and Birmingham. Losses may slow us, but the ships that come through carry the operation forward. The stuff for the firing line is ferried in first. The way supplies are handled from the start forecasts the bigger freight job to come. When materiel arrives faster than we use it, Reserves pile up. As the storage dumps grow, the base grows in power. The crated Jap airstrip is cleared for fighters and lengthened for our long-range bombers. Shell and stone, shale and coral, volcanic ash, all the odd colored stuffs of which the islands are composed are crushed and worked over by machines. The mammoths that built our civilization of roads and towers now make a Pacific islet fight for America. Marines, worn with battle, come home to the base. And the continual round begins, relieving the weary with rested men. The foxholes have grown fancier since D-Day. Life is a bit more refreshing. Gas and oil. What milk means to a baby, fuel and oil are to a base. Aviation gas reaches the airfield even before the planes.
Only when enough supply is hauled into the lines can the signal be given, advance. The onslaught is hard, swift, and coordinated. counterattack grows more violent. Tough break. They've hit the fuel dump. We fight Jap and fire together. The hook and ladder that once clanged down Main Street and every flame fighting device come to the rescue. For fire makes a base as helpless as a muscle bound boxer. Beaten back from the coast, the hard-pressed Jap holds up in the hills. Every weapon at the base that will shoot or pitch or throw a charge maneuvers into action. This is the showdown. How the stronghold on the ridge with grenade and shell, mortar, Molotov cocktail, shrapnel, and bazooka, and the deadly new firebomb. Stand by. Fire! weight of metal we throw ultimately wins. The pounding never halts. Only the toughest fortifications withstand such mass barrage. When shell cases by the thousand have spit their steel, the enemy is crushed. Stragglers may snipe for months, but the island is ours. Ships from home crowd into the anchorage of the base. Where we improve the harbor, new shapes fringe the beach. Steadily, the new base adds to the variety of its jobs. Men, machines, and weapons all go to make a base. And the base turns men, machines, and weapons into a fighting team. The raw look of a backwoods settlement gives way to sturdier installations. A boom town with the power of all America behind it. A marine garrison occupies the island, and thousands more arrive. They train against the poison gas the Jap may gamble on in his next retreats. For men on leave, there's a swimming hole. It could be Georgia, except that the diving board is a captured Jap landing craft. Medical corpsmen spray the insect-killing DDT that makes former pest holes livable. For health is another front on which the base must be secure, free of disease, 
and with water supply uncontaminated. Among the natives for many generations, legends will be told. How it was to share the islands with Americans in these great times. These many peoples of the Pacific are our allies. More civilized than the Japs who held them captive for a time. Where lately men fought for inches of mud and slime, Seabees and Marines run a jungle sawmill. Exotic tropical woods, teak and mahogany, are cut into building material to save space in the ships for urgent cargo. The airfield is surfaced. Across the raw soil, a runway is paved in jig time with prefabricated matting. At the new station of the Ocean Airlines, flyers from all the Pacific fronts meet to tell the tales that flyers tell. And their planes, scarred with adventure, are expertly patched. Those beyond repair go to the salvage dump to be cannibalized. Their precious spare parts keep other planes flying. Rapidly, the field becomes more than a whistle stop for passing planes. Its bomb dumps set the pace of air attack. Whenever there are bombs enough, we raid. We chose this island from many near it. On the map, we own one little dot surrounded by many Jap dots. But actually, because of the power we hoist in the air, our little dot controls a broad area, like an unsinkable carrier plunked down in the middle of an enemy fleet. The planes take off from a little island that only a few weeks before was Japanese. of little package to buy, but this is the payoff. For our base gives us the combination to keep a very considerable amount of Jap power tied up and helpless. The homecoming airman beholds a sight far different from the puny island of D-Day. This compact block of power is the advanced base we have built. The barracks and the warehouses spell out tomorrow's front page headline, if you know how to read such signs. Again, history traces a finger here. Our base, full grown, prepares for its greatest destiny. The clock of invasion points a new H hour. Now the veterans of many campaigns, battle smart, pack the things they will be needing. Once again, an invasion fleet stacks up offshore. The base loads for assault. The 
stored up strength goes aboard. For our base will be the mother of a new base. Before they leave, the men say so long to those who won't be going on with them. Every base is a memorial to the rich gift they gave. They gave their todays and tomorrows to give us these islands. As the attack takes off, the song is heard, the song born in foxholes that tells the long march by islands across the Pacific. Keep your pipe pace interval and keep your voices thin. It's the word we hate to hear when we lay down all our gear. Get your gear on, we're moving out again. Get two, three, four, set, two, three. The time is short, so don't delay. The ship is on its way. So hop on, fellas. Here we go for home. We have mounted our advance bases so that they roll forward. No longer a frontier when the tide of attack flows on. Each base in turn takes up new duties as a staging area, a link between America and the advancing lines. By land, by air, and now by sea, our base has taken over a piece of the map that once had a rising sun staked on it. Somewhere yonder, another island, many leagues nearer to Tokyo, is to become the edge of our world. But the Japs have learned the terrible damage each lost island brings them. Their defense grows grimmer. Fleets of suicide planes guard the empire. Watch a ship of our Pacific fleet. In five seconds, a suicide plane carrying a ton of high explosive turns it into a pile of smoke. The nearer to Japan, the harder the cost of each island we win. But the greater, too, it's worth to us as an advance base. We must deliver into the hands of fighting Americans weapons and equipment to sweep Jap shipping from these waters. We must provide all they need to build from their bases a straight path through the Pacific to the inmost vitals of Japan and to the brightness of peace that lies beyond.